today I'm going to be changing the oil in my 1996 Ford F-150 with a 5.0 liter V8 in it. This process will be similar on the 92 to 96 F-150s, especially with the V8 in it. The V8s, they're, the 5.8 and the 5.0, they're very similar on how they got things arranged up under the hood. This is a two-wheel drive. Um, depending on how you're built and how high the truck sits, you may or may not need to lift it. The four-wheel drive I used to have, I could change the oil in it without lifting it up. But with this truck, I can't get up under there without lifting it. So my first step is to lift the front of it, which I use these ramps. And you want to be safe when you do this. Once you put it up on there, chop the back wheels with a brick or a piece of wood or something and set your emergency brake. Once you have everything set, set up, give the truck a good shape. Just pull on it, wiggle it around, make sure nothing gives. So when you get under it, you ain't gotta worry about it falling on you. If you're using a jack, make sure to use jack stands. Before we get started, go ahead and have all your supplies and tools ready to go. Got a funnel for pouring the oil into the engine. Got six quarts. The book calls for a six quarts uh, of oil when you change the filter with it. I have a Napa Gold filter, part number 1515. Just about every Ford from 96 on back four trucks I've seen use a 1515 oil filter. I know for a fact 1992 to 1996 you have the 4.9 liter inline six and then you have the 5.0 and 5.8 liter V8s that can come in these trucks. They all use this 1515 oil filter. If you're buying a Wix uh, filter, which Napa Gold filters are really good quality. Uh, I use them all the time. If you're getting a Wix brand filter, it'll be a 515 and if you're getting a Motocraft brand oil filter it'll be a FL1A oil filter. To break loose the drain plug I'm using 6.58 inch socket with a long cheater bar to give me some leverage. When I install the drain plug back I use a regular open end box in uh, wrench if you use a long bar like this on putting the plug back in, you could potentially strip the threads out of the oil pan. And of course, have your oil drain pan in place and ready to go. First thing I do is remove the engine oil fill cap. That way the engine can ventilate good whenever it's draining out. Makes it a little faster for it to drain out. I've got my cheater bar on it. I'm going to break it loose. Once I got it broke loose, I'm going to have my, put my drain pin back where it should be. And then you got good threads. You should just be able to screw it on that with your fingers. There it goes. You just want to give this a few minutes to drain all the way. You want to make sure it all gets out before you go putting the plug back in. While you have the drain plug out, inspect the threads on it. Make sure they're in good shape and aren't stripping out. Check the head. Make sure it isn't rounding off. If it's starting to round off or anything, you want to go ahead and replace it. It's a good idea to replace these washers on them too. They seal help them seal up to keep from leaking and as you can see mine done ripped and so it's a good idea to just go ahead and replace it while you're in there there's a couple of different ways you can get to the oil filter on most of these trucks you can actually come from the top side of the engine and if you got long enough arms you can reach down in there with your with your filter wrench and take it off a lot of times on four-wheel drive ones where you got the four-wheel drive axle and all up under there it's actually a whole lot easier to get to from the top side versus up underneath uh, up underneath my truck is easily accessible 
look over to the driver's side right behind the axle you got your axle right here it's got a hole where you can get to it right there I'm gonna move the oil drain pan up underneath the oil filter and I like using these oil filter pliers like this always remember righty tidy lefty loosey so we're gonna turn it counterclockwise as if we were looking at it Let me open it up. Sometimes they can be a job to get off. Start to come. There it goes. Once you get it loose enough. You can generally screw them off with your hand. Let the oil drain out of it in the oil drain pan. Take your new oil filter. Get a little dab of clean oil on your finger and rub around the seal. That helps it seal better and makes it easier to get off the next time. Keeps the seal from seizing on there. Before you put the new filter on, check where it goes onto the engine block. Make sure the old seal from the old filter didn't stick on there because that will cause a leak. If you have any dirt or anything on that surface, that rim, that the filter seals on, make sure you clean it off. Now I'm going to screw the new filter on. And you only want to do it hand tight. You want to get it tight and just give it a good oomph on it. You don't want to use an oil filter wrench to tighten it. You can over tighten it and it will be a doozy to get off there. It's you have that rubber seal on there to help it seal, so as long as you give it a good oomph on it, you won't have no problems with any leaks. Now we gotta put the oil drain plug back in. Before you put it back on, make sure the surface is clean because that helps it seal. So drain plug and thread it back in by hand. This is something you don't want to mess up the threads on. Sometimes if you're having a hard time getting started, turn it counterclockwise a little bit. It can help seat them threads and get it started. Just run in as much as possible by fingers. You see, I could run it in all the way up by fingers and it's tight in there. So that means my threads are good. And you want to keep it that way. So to tighten it up, I'm just going to use a regular 5 8 wrench that way it ain't too long so I don't over tighten it open in wrench tighten it on down you don't want to get it too tight to strip it just once it gets tight just give it a little oomph and then that helps that washer to seal it and then you should be good to go on that end tighten it on down you don't want to get it too tight to strip it. Just once it gets tight, just give it a little oomph. And then that helps that washer to seal it. And then you should be good to go on that end. After you got the drain plug back in and you have the oil filter on, now it's time to put the oil in it. This truck calls for six quarts of oil with a filter change. What I like to do is... Uh, I'm gonna put five, about five and a half quarts in it. I'm gonna leave about half a quart in this one. And then I'm gonna crank it up. Let it run for a couple minutes, get the oil circulating through there and fill the oil filter up and check for leaks. And then 
let it sit for a few minutes, check the oil level, and then top it off to where it needs to be. Because I'd rather have a half quart too little in there than a half quart too much. You got too much oil, it can't circulate right. It's just as bad as not having enough. A five and a half quarts, you're gonna be safe with the engine running. That's not gonna hurt a thing. about half a quart out of this one in there. And, yeah, a little more than five and a half. That'd be okay. Make sure it drains all out of your funnel. So it's all drained out of there. Take the funnel off. Make your jugs fall off. Put your oil filler cap back on. Now after you've done the oil change, when I crank the engine up, the, uh, when I turn the switch on, the oil pressure gauge is going to go all the way to low. It'll take a few seconds for it to pump that oil up and you'll see it come up. You want to keep an eye on that gauge make sure you get your oil pressure back that's very important then after i know that i got oil pressure i'll get out and look under the truck while it's running you don't want to crawl up under you can just look down there with a flashlight make sure you don't have any oil leaks a few minutes go ahead and recheck your oil level I don't know if you can see that in the camera or not but it's about a half a quart low it's right in the middle between the add a quart and the full mark so I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of that quart of oil in it to top it off If you spill any oil on the engine anywhere, make sure to clean it up or you'll get that burn oil smell coming off of it. The last thing to do is take a look at your mileage, write it down in a notebook, piece of, in a notebook, and write the date down and what kind of oil you use. That way you can keep track of it and know when to change your oil again. So that's how I do my oil changes in my 1996 Ford F-150. If you have anything to add to it, leave a comment below. I hope this video helps you out. If you liked it, please remember to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel.